The skill that we're working on today is ratio word problems. So the reason that we want to look at ratio word problems are to put more meaning to them than just having numbers. So these are going to be real world and real life applications. So things that occur every day. Some places that you're going to see these are, um, you definitely see ratios when you look at gas stations, when you look at speed limit signs, um, when you look at how companies work to try to how try to see how they need to spend and save money on things and how how many how much they do things per day or per hour are things that they need are ways that we see that um, we need to remember that a ratio is a comparison of two quantities and we're going to see that in some examples again here coming up two examples we're going to do today first one says you are going on a family road trip if you travel 55 miles in one hour, how far will you travel in eight hours? So let's make our ratio first. First I have 55 miles. And I do that in one hour. So this came straight from 55 miles in one hour. How far will you travel in eight hours? So remember I want these ratios to be equivalent. So for my next ratio, I have eight hours. I want them to be in the same parts of our ratio here. So one hour goes here, eight hours go here. I have to make sure to label them. If I don't label hours here, I'm going to be confused as to where hours go over here. So I have to find out this then. How many miles did I go? So questionable amount of miles. So let's look for something that we can do. How do I go from one to eight? Remember our two operations, we're either going to multiply or divide. So 1 to 8 times 8. So we have to use the same rule over here. I'm going to do 55 times 8. When you work that out, make sure that we do 55 times 8. If we forgot how to use the standard algorithm for this, that's okay, we can relearn it. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 5 is 40, plus 4 is 44. So my answer for this one is we traveled 440 miles. And miles is abbreviated MI. If you just use M, that's meters, that's very different from miles. Let's look at one more example where we use a ratio. One eighth of an ice cream container can serves one person. How many ice cream containers do you need to purchase to serve 20 people? So I have one eighth of the ice cream container. So this is non-standard because it's not just saying like a mile or an inch. So one eighth of an ice cream container per one person. This looks really strange because we it looks like we have a fraction in a fraction. That's okay. Okay, I want to know how many I need to serve 20 people. There's two ways to do this. So one way is just like the first example. So let's see how many we need to get to 20. So just like we did in the first example, 1 to 20, I can do times 20. And I'd have to use the same rule here, times 20. Okay, so skill that we need to remember is when I multiply a fraction, 1 eighth times 20. 20 as a fraction is 20 over 1. And we multiply straight across, so that's 20 1 times 20 is 20, 8 times 1 is 8, 20 over 8. Um, you can divide that if you want to, or you can simplify it. For this purpose, I would prefer to divide it. So I'm going to do 20 divided by 8. Twenty divided by 8. 8 goes into 2, it doesn't. 8 goes into 22 times. So that's 16. And there's a little bit left over. 
there's a remainder of four. So I'm gonna get two, we're gonna put remainder here, remainder four. Remainders are important. Um, we try to use decimals and fractions, but two remainder four. So think about that realistically. How many ice cream containers do you need to purchase? If you go to the store, will they will they give you two and then four little bits? No. So we actually have to purchase three containers. So we have to purchase three containers. Okay. Um, a different way to do this too is if I think of one eighth as serving one person. I can think, well, one eighth, how do I get to a whole container? I would multiply by eight. That would be one container. If I multiply this by eight, that means that it's eight people. Okay, so one container serves eight people. And then I can use this as my ratio because using whole numbers might be easier. So let's make equivalent fractions here in equivalent ratios. So times two would be two containers for 16 people. And then let's go back to the beginning. One, we're going to just say times three would be three containers. Eight times three would be 24 people. So I'd say, do I need to buy two containers or three? I need to buy three, okay? Two different ways to do this problem. Do what works best for you.